Welcome to Rational Man, the Easter Math. What is an Easter Math, you may ask? Quite simply, it is a portmanteau between Easter and Aftermath. As with most of our major holidays, there are quite a lot of uh, leftovers after Easter, uh, things that you have to deal with, such as, you know, chickens, rabbits, chocolate, Easter eggs, that sort of thing. Also, I'd like to introduce our new props. This one is a bunch of dead flowers. Why dead flowers, you might ask? Quite simply, they are low maintenance. Much more uh, low maintenance, at least, than live flowers, or what we call live flowers, which are, in fact, mostly dead flowers. So I just went the extra way and got the fully dead ones instead. On this side, we have a snow globe which appears to be something along the lines of a raven, which inexplicably happens to be playing the tune dashing through the snow. This is not merely a prop. This is a harbinger of things to come, a bit of foreshadowing for our next show, where I have perfected the snow globe. Why? I'll have an answer for you next week. Now, as far as Easter, or the remains of Easter, you can figure out what to do with your chocolate easily enough. Probably also that fake grass and all those things. All those things that you can just easily throw away or eat or um, take the Humane Society. But what's left over are some almost useful things that we know as plastic Easter eggs. So let's go ahead and skip out to the shop and see what we can do with these. We're going to shoot the rest of the show out here in the shop because this is where the real fun stuff happens. Plastic Easter eggs, which are almost useless by themselves. Now by happy coincidence, it turns out that the Easter egg is almost a perfect replacement for the nose cone of a 40 millimeter shell. We're not going to reload all kinds of shells. Let me make that perfectly clear. First of all, the first kind of 40 millimeter grenade we're not going to load is anything that's linked. Anything that comes in a belt was not meant for a 203 or an M79. When you try to load a shell from an M19 into an M203, it won't quite fit. And if it almost fits, it's the same as does not fit. Any shell that looks kind of like this, where you can see there's what appears to be a 38 caliber uh, stuck in the breech of it. Those can all be reloaded. You also might run across something that looks a bit like this. Now this is quite a fascinating little object and it looks like it might be reloadable. However, to reload this would probably violate the first rule of ordinance being if you don't know what it is, don't screw with it. In fact, when it comes right down to it, there's only two kinds of shells that is even legal to reload. One of them is the less than lethal round. I personally will not do it. The reason simply is, is less than lethal isn't always less than lethal. If somebody gets killed with these, and remember, they're going to be shooting them at people, or might be shooting them at people. If someone gets killed, they will find out, among other things, who loaded it. And if it's you, heh, too bad. You're going to be at fault no matter how perfect you are. You're going to have some fault in this. And, of course, uh, that comes down to, basically, this. This is your standard practice round. They normally have a standard plastic cap on them. But, if you wish, you can put your own plastic cap on them. Now, obviously, um, these aren't going to be quite the same amount of, um, of powder. But remember, this is just an orange powder for marking it. When it hits the ground, it goes splat, and, and there you have it. Now, um, when it comes down to the black powder, normally you're looking at about uh, 50 grains equivalent of black powder for the reload. The reload being a 38 short. Um, also important to remember, the basic why is this. Here's your less than lethal round weighing in at under one ounce. And here's your charge separator. 
the essentially besides separating your charge from your from your powder that is your orange powder the charge separator has the other function of approximating the weight of an actual grenade so it flies the same as you can see here it's like five and a half times or six times heavier than this essentially if you reloaded this and tried to shoot somebody with it you'd have essentially a wad cutter that weighs six ounces probably not less than lethal don't recommend it okay now down to the nitty-gritty how do you reload your case well you start out by making sure that the hole is clean and free of distract uh, of um, debris then on this side it's a little less critical you don't have to remove the old sealant you're going to be putting some new sealant in there either some gel gasket or perhaps some bathtub caulk or basically anything that's not too grabby you want a nice clean release when this thing goes off so it flies true all right now um, then you go ahead and just put that on a flat surface and you're going to press fit Basically, you're going to press fit your 38 blank, and remember, no more than 40 grams of black, I mean, I'm sorry, 40 grains of black powder or equivalent. You go ahead and put that in, and remember, it's going to be tight. So put your thumb square on the center, and then push it all the way in. Now, that's not quite all the way in, as you can see there. It's a little bit out, so we'll go ahead and give it a smack with a hammer, being careful not to detonate it. Maybe another smash. Okay, good. As you can see, that's uh, all, all flush up there. All right, next, you take the charge separator and put the pointy end in, like that. Now, I didn't put any sealant on there, but you get the idea. It's actually pretty hard to remove anyway, even without the sealant. Might even be uh, a waste of time to put the sealant in there. Next, We're going to go ahead and set up a little production line here. Here you have all your Easter colors. And by the way, you don't have to use orange, but you can get this in bulk too if you're doing a lot. You can use red, and they also have it in blue and just dozens of other colors. Um, but you know, just use whichever color you fancy. And again, this is nothing, nothing too scientific here. Just fill it up. You can wipe off the excess when you're done. And then what you'll do is you'll put the bathtub cock on this part and then invert it. And again, don't worry about the spillage. That's normal. You want to get it as full as possible to make the biggest, um, what you'd call, um, splat possible. Oops. Okay, and again, normally before you did that, you put the sealant on it. I'm not personally going to use these uh, because they actually, to tell you the truth, they fly a little funny, but hey, it's all in good fun, so what's the difference? And you'll see also that your finished round is not nearly as big as a regular round, but far more festive. The final test is, does it fit? Now we're just going to go ahead and put our round in there and see if it fits. Well, hallelujah. As you can see, it fits. Oh, how festive. Who wouldn't want that in their Easter basket? So there you have it in an eggshell. What to do with your leftover Easter supplies. Reusing is green, so is recycling. And recycling and reusing are both rational strategies. And as rational man, I'm 100% behind this movement. Remember though, before you go out and shoot off some of these, find out whether it is legal in your state, county, and city, because maybe it isn't. You don't want to get a nasty surprise that way. Obviously, it should go without saying that you should never shoot a 40 millimeter grenade at anything you don't want to harm. But I'm gonna say it anyway. Don't shoot these at people or animals or cars, or houses, or personal property of any kind. Go way out in the country where you have a lot of room, and uh, knock yourself out. As always, this is Rational Man. Thanks for watching.